Hello space travelers, Jiffy here, and welcome to my little corner of the galaxy. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Let's see here. David, uh, we're here on this planet called Earth. Have survived the night, therefore the night did not last forever. Hello Jiffy, I hope your day's been good. Yep, oh, it's been going pretty good. Um, the hubby and I got to, uh, he, he works from home on Mondays, uh, so I got to enjoy the eclipse with him today. Um, thankfully, I kept our, um, our, our glasses from the 2017 solar eclipse, so we were able to view it today. <laughs> Did you get a, do a good view from it from where you're at? Hello, souls! Welcome to the chat! Did you get to see the eclipse? Um, I was just telling David that, um, my husband got to work from home today, and I'm usually off, so we got to enjoy the eclipse today. And I saved our glasses from the 2017 eclipse, so woohoo! Eye protection. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, let me know how your guys' uh, experience was. I actually will have uh, pulled up here shortly um, just some fun facts about the solar eclipse that I uh, looked up briefly. <laughs> um, I hope you guys had a good weekend, um, and I hope it's a good start to your week. I have uh, Ekna pulled up here. I'm going to continue working on her today. I think I might actually move her antenna up just a little bit more, but uh, I've been having fun working on this. Uh, David, uh, I never actually saw it, but I was viewing it on Facebook. Yeah, there was a, a lot of places were having like a live feed of it um, online and like showing the different areas. Uh, let's see here. Uh, souls. Yes, I did see it. It was good and I got my solar eclipse donut too. It was also good. Yeah, those looked very delicious. Uh, were they like... Were those Oreos on it with like the Oreo cream filling kind of spilling out on it? I bleh, sorry on it. Uh, David uh, saw a really good shot from a friend posted from Texas. Ah, okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, see. And as usual, guys, please let me know if the music's too loud or if you can't hear me very well. Um, I've noticed it's different on everyone. Uh, diff everyone's like different devices. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you sent the photo to my husband. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, the our uh, our Discord of our uh, close friends have been posting a lot of stuff all day. Uh, souls. Uh, my weekend was good, and also trying Tetris for the first time on the Switch. And yes, it was the Oreo on top. Yep, yep, yep. Um, my uh, brother-in-law loves Tetris, and it's so fascinating to watch him play it. Um, my brain doesn't quite uh, go fast enough for stuff like that. But if it's anything like musically inclined, I tend to do a lot better with pattern rec recognition. <laughs> do, do, do. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I got Ekna pulled up here today. Um, I got most like roughly the sketch done. Um, I'm really loving how this is turning out so far. And I'm just happy to be drawing her again to uh, continue on with Autism Acceptance Month. Do, do, do. Let's see here. Okay. Keeping up with the chat. I think I'm going to turn the music down just slightly, at least on my end. There we go. That's a little better. Okay. So, um, I thought it'd be fun to kind of start off with uh, just some fun facts about the solar eclipse. Uh, this little blue alien wants to know what is the big deal with Earth's solar eclipse? 
Let's see here. Let me see if I can pull it up. Turn. Oh, where is it at? Uh, turn the iPad off for now. Do, do, do. Yes, that one. Do I have one second? Still working on the, the kinks of uh, certain things here. One second. There we go. Do, do. Yes, this. Yes, please. Um, one moment. Hmm, yes, this one. Okay, there's that. Nope, that's not the right one. <laughs> Oop, should be this one. One second. Oh, I had this all figured out earlier. Uh, is it this one? Come on. There we go. For some reason, just shrank down very small. Oh, come back here. I will get there. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. All right. Can I please not have it in small mode here? Oh, boy. All right. Let's try this. Go. Oh, come on. Yes, please. We'll get there. I apologize, guys. Thank you for being patient. Okay, what is happening? Mm. Okay, can we please, let me move this over here. Maybe that, okay, I see what's going on. Let me do this again. Yes, please. Uh, oh, I see. I need to turn it on. That would help. There we go. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. So we got 25 solar eclipse facts. Uh, let me get caught up on chat here. All right. Um, do, do, do. Okay, there we go. Uh, David, my day has been mainly recording two videos and then just before the stream editing the videos. Now they are rendering while I enjoy the stream. Yeah, that's something I don't, um, I have like some free program to help edit videos, but I just don't know if I have like the time and patience to edit. So <laughs> um, I do um, want to take a day to kind of go through some of my videos and do some uh, clips uh, from, from my streams because I, I know there's some fun stuff in there. Uh, sounds good, says Souls, and Soul says it's it was crazy getting married on the solar eclipse too, Jerry. Let's see, married on the solar eclipse. Uh, uh, okay, help me out, Souls. Are you saying you got married on the solar eclipse? Um, I definitely, um, we got married on the 17th, which is actually next week of April. And I don't believe there was a solar eclipse there. Um, uh, no worries, take your time, says David. Indeed, it's all cool. Um, yeah, so, yeah, my, uh, thanks for bringing that up, actually. Uh, so, next Monday, I'm actually gonna take, uh, oh, someone else said, oh, okay, dude, I can't imagine having a solar eclipse-themed wedding, that's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, um, next Monday, um, I'll try to put out a, uh, a reminder, um, I'm gonna take next Monday off from streaming. Uh, next week is my anniversary. Uh, I'm married to my best friend for three years, but we have been friends for over 20 years. Um, and I want to kind of like just have a whole week of just spending time with him. Hey, Tayden, welcome to the chat. How are you doing? Thanks for coming and hanging out in our little corner of the galaxy. Um, we are uh, about to talk about 25 solar eclipse facts today, and then I'm going to continue drawing on a... Uh, original uh, alien OC of mine that I started last week for Autism Acceptance Month. Um, before the alien that you see before you, I had a completely different OC that I made uh, long before um, I knew I was autistic. Um, thanks for, uh... <laughs> yeah, sorry, souls, I misunderstood what you were saying, but yeah, I, that'd be cool to have a, um, a, sorry, a wedding during the solar eclipse. How cool, like, Imagine the shots of like pictures you can get. Um, I'm glad you're doing good, Tayden. Um, we, um, yeah, I'm gonna go over some quick 25 solar eclipse facts and then I'm just gonna continue drawing today. Um, what was I going on for? Um, 
Sorry, my my brain got a little got, I got a little jumbled. Do do do. Okay, so let's get into it today. Thank you for anybody lurking and taking the time to join me this evening. I really appreciate it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, next Monday, I'm going to take off from streaming on the, uh, let's see, it should be the, the 15th. Uh, I'll put out a reminder. I'm going to take that week to really just focus on spending time with my husband. Um, and then I'm hoping by the end of the month, I'm going to get a, a gaming stream set up uh, for the uh, Jackbox game. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it here. 25 solar eclipse facts. And there's a couple in here I was like, really like, oh no. But it probably won't happen during, you know, our time here. Uh, but it was very kind of, it was like, kind of scary. <laughs> okay, so let's scroll through here. Oop. Did I turn that down a little too much? There we go. Okay, so let's go to number one. This will be the first total, total solar eclipse in the continental U.S. in seven years. So I guess the one that we saw in uh, 2017, or that I saw, uh, was not a full uh, solar eclipse. Uh, the one that was uh, today actually covered, I think it was like 80% of total, uh, the totality. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, a solar eclipse only occurs when the sun and the moon are aligned or in synergy. So it's something interesting that I found out was, and here's a nice picture, that the the sun is just the right amount of distance away for how big the moon is for the moon to be able to completely cover the sun. And I thought that was cool. Um, continue on here. Um, a solar eclipse only happens at a new moon. I thought that was interesting. Uh, the moon has been, the moon has to be, to be between the sun and the earth for a solar, solar eclipse to occur. The only lunar phase uh, when that happens is the new moon. Hey, okay. yeah, dude, I, um, I've been kind of having fun with some of the streams if there's like something cool going on to like go over some facts. Let's see here. All right, um, let's continue on here. There we go. There's a good little uh, image here. Let's see. Let me look here. Clips not possible because of the full view of moons are not near the roots. Interesting. Oh, huh. yeah. So it just has to be a, a complete uh, new moon for that to happen. That's really cool. Um, number five. Eclipse totalities are different lengths. The reason that total moon, sorry, sorry, restart. The reason that total phases of the solar eclipse vary in time is because Earth is not always at the same distance from the sun, and the moon is not always the same distance from Earth. The Earth-Sun distance varies by 3% and the moon-Earth distance by 12. The result is that the moon apparent diameter can range from 10% smaller to 7% larger than the sun's. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Let me check on the chat. Let's see here. Sounds good. Lafat, David, I enjoy these facts before the art stream. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I figured I got, you know, it's just funny the last two Mondays that something cool was going on. <laughs> and I thought it'd be fun to talk about. Uh, Tayden, fun fact, the next solar eclipse won't happen again in the U.S. until 2045. At least that's what I've heard. Yep. That's actually one of the, uh, the facts here on this list. So it's going to be a long, long, long time. So I, I understand why some of my friends drove like way out of town to uh, witness total the, the totality. And I, I was telling my husband, I always laughed like this. The word totality sounds like uh, a Mortal Kombat <laughs> finisher move. <laughs> it just sounds so serious because it kind of is, you know, it's really it's something rare that happens. Oh, OK, let me see here. Number six is all about magnitude and obscuration. Astronomers categorize each solar eclipse in terms of its magnitude, magnitude and obscuration. And I don't want you to be confused when you encounter these terms. The magnitude of a solar eclipse is the percentage of the sun's diameter that the moon covers during maximum eclipse. The obscuration is the percent of the sun's total surface area at maximum. Here's an example. If the moon covers half the sun's diameter, in this case, the magnitude equals 50%, the amount of obscuration, the area of the sun's disk and the moon blots out will only be 39.1%. I kind of like tuned half of that out, but hopefully that made sense to you guys. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Uh, chat. Um, 
Souls, uh, nice, that was crazy. Uh, David, if and when you view the picture I sent him, it was taken from the Texas at its peak. Yeah, we had that uh, live stream playing in uh, Mexico. I think very south is where uh, you could see the totality and then Texas too. Um, let's see here. Similar solar and lunar eclipses reoccur every 6,585.3 days. So 18 years, 11 days and eight hours. Scientists call this length of time a Saros cycle. Uh, two eclipses separated by one Saros cycle are very similar. They occur at the same node. Uh, the moon's distance from the Earth is nearly the same, and they happen at the same time of year. Okay. Uh, so yeah, everyone in the U.S., I'm not sure about um, everyone outside of the U.S., please inform me um, what your experience with the eclipse was like, but... We at least got to see a partial eclipse in most places here in the U.S. Um, let's see here. I think here where I where I live, it was probably. Give me one second. Oh, what's the best one? I think it looked a lot like the um, the one that says 8:40 a.m. right here. It, it was about that much covered. We had like 80% totality. It's all about the totality. So, fun thing about the totality um, that I also looked up was um, there was something called Flight of the Concord, and I believe it happened in like 1973. Um, my friend showed this to me, and basically what they did, they were able to fly this plane right in the middle of the solar totality in complete darkness at the right exact time. And to be able to pinpoint that was insane. Um, they had to like fly this plane at the right speed and uh, just at the exact time. Like I don't know how else to explain other than um, that takes a lot of like precision. <laughs> and I think they got to experience like 10 to 15 minutes of total solar eclipse totality. Oh, let's see here. Um... I see that's cool, Jiffy. I see, I see. And Tayden, I didn't see any of it because I was working during it. I gotcha. The last time that I saw the eclipse was when I was at uh, the other, lo I was at another uh, location of the, the company that I work for. And I had the glasses and they let us go out during um, like peak time to kind of check it out. So I was at work also uh, when the last solar eclipse happened. Oh, let's see here. Um, we're kind of breeze over a couple of these. Yeah, first contact is in Texas. So, uh, David, yeah, you were telling me your friend had um, a really good picture. So, uh, let's see, it lasted four minutes and 22 seconds. Here's a good, like, graph of, like, of, the, let's see here, uh, the path. There we go. Yeah, the path of the solar eclipse. Uh, the center line crosses through 15 states. Let's see here. Do -do. Cool. Yeah, a lot of people in the Midwest got to see it. That's pretty cool. Um, total totality lasts at maximum of four minutes and twenty-eight seconds. That's it. To experience that length, you'll need to be in a small town of Nazas, Mexi Mexico, which is about forty miles southwest of Orion. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And trust me, no matter how long totality really lasts, solar eclipses are so captivating. They always seem to only last a few brief seconds. Let's see. The end of the eclipse for U.S. is, is in Maine. Yeah, uh, that would make sense. Like the far north east side of uh, the U.S. Um, uh, uh, things are afoot before and after. Uh, do, 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 do. There's so there's so many facts. I don't want to like. I won't read every single one, but these are really cool. This one will be the most viewed ever. Um. Because, yeah, as, as Tayden was saying, this is the last one that we're going to see in a very long time. Let's see here. Several large cities will enjoy a view. Okay. Totality is safe to look at. During the time the moon disc covers the sun, and only then, it is safe to look at the eclipse without the solar filter or eclipse glasses. In fact, the experience to experience the awesomeness of the event, you must look at the sun without a filter during totality. Yeah, I, th this is a cool image right here. We kind of got a little bit of that on the uh, the recording live feed. Uh, just 
That has to look super cool. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. Hey, Stacia, welcome to the chat. How are you doing? Uh, the next total solar eclipse is in 2026, and the path of totality includes Greenland, Iceland. Eclipse plus lava watching anyone? Spain and Russia. That that would be really cool. I've been really... Uh, if there's... Gosh, I'm always stuck between, like, do I go visit, like, the UK or Japan? Like, both those places sound so fun. Uh, Seisha, I'm absolutely hoping to make it to Iceland for the 2026 totality. That sounds awesome. I hope you get there. Um, let's see here. Yeah, this was the other fact I was mentioning. So the sun, obviously, is a lot bigger than the moon. But it, like... It, it's 400 times larger than the moon, but it just conveniently is 400 times farther away than the moon. And um, <laughs> so it's just, that's how the moon's able to like completely cover it like it like it is. Let's see. You don't need a te teleco oh, sorry, telescope. <laughs> um, nature will take heat. So I thought this was interesting. Um, I kind of like looked around while it was happening, probably because we weren't in total totality where I'm at, but uh, like it'll get very like quiet and like even animals like birds and stuff will think it's like nighttime and it'll, it'll get kind of eerily quiet and it will drop 10 to 15 degrees in temperature uh let's see here mm -hmm. the longest possible uh duration of a totality uh is seven minutes and 32 seconds uh yeah and this is the Wow, holy cow. One uh, one approaching that timeline won't occur until June 13th of 2132. Oh man, that's super cool. Uh, the eclipse with the maximum duration of 6 minutes and 55 seconds will be the longest since the 7 minutes and 4 seconds of totality experienced in June 30th, 1973. June must be where it's at. <laughs> Oh man, um, do do. I think this. Yep, yep, yep. April. I thought it was interesting that it fell on April eighth. And um, just because my favorite number is eight, um, because when you turn it on its side, it's the infinity symbol, and I'm just like more connections to the to the tism on my end. <laughs> I used to draw a figure eight, like an infinity symbol on all my like paperwork and homework and all that stuff. So but yeah, so that that's just some facts about the, the eclipse. Um, I thought I'd start with that and then I'm probably gonna get in, back into drawing today. Um, if anyone else, like I said, if anyone else got to experience the eclipse today, I'd love to hear your account. We got pretty lucky, uh, me, and my, me and my husband were off and where our uh home is located we had a great view of the sun like all afternoon so i'm gonna go ahead and put this bad boy away and go back to the ipad Woo! so i got most of the sketch done off screen and i'm just gonna start inking this today um and yeah let's see here to david you and death the kid share a love for eight because of its symmetry <laughs> Yeah, um, gosh, I can't believe how old that anime is. Uh, Death the Kid is from an anime called Soul Eater. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has seen it. Um, but yeah, I just, um, yeah, just, oh, my, uh, my, my number that I would get when I would play any sports, I always pick number eight. Um, I would always draw the infinity symbol all over my paperwork. I just, yeah, I can go on and on about that, but... Yeah, so uh, we have Ekna here. Um, I'm kind of like messing around with um, like where I want placements and stuff, especially like for her antenna. I kind of originally had some like these little, uh, let me see if I'm on the right layer. I had like some bulbs like this and I don't know if I really like those, uh, but I gotta somehow make it look like it's coming out of her head. Otherwise it looks like they're just like kind of stuck on there. But yeah. Um, how, uh, let's see, Tayden and Stacia, how was your weekend and how was the start to your week? Mm -hmm. Thanks for letting me ramble on about the uh, solar eclipse for a few minutes there. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. Oh, did I put those? Oh, goodness. I put the clothes in the... That's okay, it's not a big deal. Accidentally put the clothes and the wings on the same layer. Whoopsies. That's okay. 
This is just the sketch, not a big deal. Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, Souls. Yes, indeed. I've seen Soul Eater and just uh, read the manga and started watching Shang Ray Frontier. Finished uh, Freanon Season 1. I, I think I've heard of those. I think they're popular right now. There's so many anime out now. I have a hard time keeping up with it. <laughs> And uh, as a reminder, again, I I will um I will make a more I'll make a public post. Sorry, um I will be taking a break next Monday uh, as my anniversary week with my husband. So I thought I'd take a break from streaming and just uh, focus on that. Also, thank you so much for uh, the, the last video ha has a, I was very, very pleasantly surprised with the, the view count on my last video. Thank you so much to anybody that's sharing or liking my videos or enjoying them. Uh, let's see here. Taden, my weekend was okay. We did somewhat well at bowling, but other than that, not much. Have two more weeks of bowling. I actually really do enjoy bowling. <laughs> I get a little too overconfident and then I always end up th throwing it in the gutter. I'm just like, I'm big and strong. Look at me roll this, but I can do this. And then I end up throwing it in the gutter. I get a little too overconfident. Uh, let's see here. Stacia, I'm gonna find my eclipse glasses. So I use a piece of paper with a pinhole to watch it that way. Hey, you know, there was, um, there's something called uh, Yates. Uh, it's over in Midtown, some sort of like, uh, community school thing that they were doing the same thing with their science club where they were just using like a piece of paper so yeah hey you know what it might be the old-fashioned way but it works uh, let's see here Tayden uh, but also I also did create a new D&D character he will be a backup character he is a, a turtle divination wizard and he and his name is Nordal he's so he's Nordal with the turtle <laughs> that's funny yeah you'll have to tell me more about him uh, when I come to work Oh man. Okay, let's see here. Right, her antenna. I think I want to kind of move them a little higher up on her head. So let me see here. Turn this off for a second. Oh no, she's naked. Oh goodness. Oh, well, one thing I forgot on um the last stream when I was showing this character is I actually have this character tattooed on my back. Um I'll see if I can pull it up here in a second. Let me get this um, copy paste. Mm -hmm. Oh, whoops. I did the wrong. Oh my goodness. There, I get my layers mixed up again. Do, do, do. All right. One moment. Oh, I see why that happened. I see. Turn this off. Try it again. This uh, copy paste tool has been my friend in helping me keep things symmetrical and the same size and shapes. <laughs> okay. Oops. Well, first off, here. why is it? One moment. Oh, I'm such a goofball. Do do do. I'm on the wrong layer. That's why. Okay. But yeah, if, um, oh, there we go, um, okay, I read that one, uh, David, nice, I need to start at the D&D campaign with my friends, I had a really fun wood elf druid who has an affinity for trees, think poison ivy love, but with trees specifically, uh, let's see, uh, but his backstory, <laughs> I, uh, my favorite thing to do with any, like, D&D character is they have to have some sort of, like, gimmick or something just kind of silly um or like kind of how would I explain it? like it could be like a negative trait depending on how you look at it um flip that okay actually no wait flip that back we're gonna erase this oops wrong layer um 
There we go. Um, what was it? Uh, I don't remember what the last silly little quirk that I did for a character was, but I like to do something silly. Um, it could be something that probably annoys the party. <laughs> um, but it, that kind of helps me have something to, like focus on for the character. I do. There we go. Move these antenna. I think they need to sit up a little higher on her head. Uh, I love D and D. Um, my uh, my father in law um, and my husband. Um, the, you know, I met him when we were very young, and the first the, the one thing that his father always did when we came over to entertain us was play Dungeons and Dragons. You know, he didn't have a lot of money and all that stuff, and he would always uh, buy us um, some squirt soda and uh what was it uh you would get a yellow cake mix with fudge icing like just a pillsbury cake mix with the fudge icing and so for our, our wedding our groom's cake was a yellow cake with a fudge icing in honor of him um but yeah we would always it was just such a fun um i had never experienced anything like it before when i was little so i had so much fun getting to like use my imagination <laughs> One sec here. Okay. Turn the do, do, do. Oop. All right. So let's move this a little higher on her head. Shall we? Oop. Maybe somewhere right there. Yeah. Right here. Oop. Yeah, I like it a little bit higher on the head. So let's also do the same thing gonna copy and then we're gonna paste it Oop. and then we're gonna flip it flip it good keep it over here for the moment do, 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 do. let's see here uh david i'll see if i can find that document awesome um actually i need to step away really quick use a little aliens room and i will be right back okay
right, sorry about that, guys. Thank you for being so patient. And yeah, Souls, thank you so much. Um, I just got an alert on my phone. I realized I didn't have like my delivery address on there. Um, thank you so much. Uh, that'll really help. Um, I've had the same pencil tip on my iPad for a while, and I noticed that might be why I'm having some issues. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. Um, no, no obligation to anybody. I did make a uh, throne account. It's just somewhere that I could put. Um, if you guys want to purchase little gifts for me, that is linked down in my YouTube. Sorry, on my YouTube page. Um, and yeah, thank you, souls. That the pen, the pencil tips will be very, very, very helpful. <laughs> do, do, do okay. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. All right. What was I doing? This one. Do, do, do. That. Alrighty. So, um, I guess to continue with Autism Acceptance Month, um, if there's any any fellow nerd, uh, neurospices in the chat, if you have any questions for me, I'd be more than happy to answer if I can. Um, I know everyone ex everyone's experience is a little different, so um, it, the questions can vary, and if it's something I can't answer, I'll let you know. But um, I would love to help as much as I can. It's been a very long uh, journey um, coming into myself um, from starting from like a, a, a period of extreme burnout um, where I just couldn't do what was, you know, my norm anymore. <laughs> And it's taken a lot of a lot of work to get where I'm at now. So if there's anything I can do to help anybody on their journey uh, with their neurodiversity, I'm more than happy to help if I can. <laughs> Accepting uh, this part of myself has been a very, very important part of my journey. Okay. Oh my goodness. I swear she's not nude. Let's see here. Let's go here. Move this over. Okay. Aw, she's so cute. I just love her so much. I can see why people think she's a fairy the way that I kind of drew her. Let's see here. There we go. That lined up. Not quite. That looks almost right. Oh, wrong layer. Okay. Um. Uh. Right. I always I say this every stream. Um. If um if you guys wouldn't mind liking and sharing or even commenting on this video, if you feel like there's someone else, I would love to have a little stop at my corner of the galaxy. I would really appreciate it. I was very, I was so flattered with the, <laughs> my view count on the last uh, video. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. uh, David, I found my D&D character. Um, and then Souls, I plan to get a new battery for my PSP. Looks nice and coolness. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> oh, let's see here. I have, uh, gosh, what was my, um, my, one of my favorite characters, um, I don't, I try never to be the player that, um, makes things, like, in, like, hard for my team, if that makes sense, uh, but I did have a character that was, um, I don't know, how would I describe her, um, there we go, um, she was just kind of aloof and really, really silly, and um, you never knew what she was going to do. She kind of seemed like she was a space case. Um, <laughs> space. Um, but uh, I never tried to hinder the party. Um, the, I think we were like meeting up with, we just happened to run into a devil in the middle of the woods. And um, he invited us into his log cabin or whatnot, and... <laughs> Uh, he mentioned something about there being like little, like boar, like piggy, like, like boar, little piggies, basically. And um, I had befriended one of the little piggies and I brought them in with me. I think I was playing Pathfinder. And so uh, one of 
the things in Pathfinder is I think you can have like at least the one that I chose I chose a goddess or a god then she was like the god of art or whatever and so I was usually the one navigating or like drawing maps and of where we've been and I was playing with the piggy and this this devil is like literally like being very threatening and very like just you know uh, mischievous and all of a sudden they you know they went over to me and I had been taking the little piggy that I've been playing with and dipped their nose in some paint and was like putting little heart stamps with the piggy's nose all over his cabin and decorating his cabin. <laughs> and they're like, what was her name? Her name was Alexio. They're like, Alexio, what are you doing? He's like, and, and I went, do you know if you turn a piggy upside down, his nose makes a heart? And I just like stamped the devil's face with the piggy's nose covered in paint. <laughs> and everyone was just like, oh no, please. <laughs> just one of those. I just like, just to th even to throw the DM off a little bit. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, the DM tends, depending on who's DMing, some of them like are a little too serious. And so I like to mess with them a little bit, but not enough to like derail what they're doing. Just enough. He like literally looked at me. It's like he looked very like confused and <laughs> I'm I'm just not taking this whole scenario serious at all. <laughs> oh man. Definitely one of my favorites. Whoops. Let's see here, David. Um, the backstory: L uh, Lyra Black uh, Blackthorn, or is it Blackthorn? Is a wood elf who has a dragon blood and raised by creatures of the forest. Unknown, un sorry, unknown to Lyra, he can understand, read, and speak in the ancient dialect of the dragon. However, anytime he tries to do so with other nearby or uh, with others nearby or inform them of what he previously heard or read, he is unable to remember what he's going to say or relate. That's at least a portion of it. It can't go wrong with the Dragonborn. My very first character, I was a, I, I that's another project I'm wanting to do. I have a very Mary Sue character. Her name is Kiku, and she was half. She was definitely a dragon lady. Um, her colors were red and black. <laughs> her hair was black. Um, her outfit was like, well, her, her outfit, you know, funny enough, um, young, young Jiffy brain knew the primary colors, even though I didn't know what primary, like the term for primary colors. So she had red, blue, and yellow. So like I was on the right track, but she still had the red and black and she was very like soon dare, edgy, angsty. Um, I still love her to this day. I'll have to pull up a picture of her. Actually, give me one sec. Let me see if I can pull up the tattoo that I have of the young, uh, or this alien that I'm drawing right now. Oh, let's add an image. Okay. Browse. I'm pretty sure I saved it. Do, do, do. Old art. There we go. Fan art. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay. Give me one second. Do let's turn off the iPad. Boop. Turn this, bring this down. Almost there. Boop. There we go. Yep. This is um, this this image was drawn by an artist. I I unfortunately don't have the copy, but I just have the digital. Uh, but yeah, she's tattooed on my back. I just loved her so much. I just wanted her tattooed on me. Um, I would love to kind of get her like updated and kind of cleaned up a little bit. Uh, but like if I've never I'm, I'm so I everyone's a little different on how they want to present with their with their neurodivergent I like to use person first because I am autistic, you know And I was very proud to have this on my back and every time I showed people I just felt like really proud that I like created this character that seemed very unique and fun and like Was a representation of myself. So yeah, I love it so much I, I got it when I was I think I was 25 but yeah, I've had it for almost 10 years, but it still looks pretty good. Let me turn that. Where's it at? Turn that. Turn this back on. And turn that off. There we go. Okay. Appreciate all of you guys in the chat. You, you make time fly, I promise. 
I love being able to chat with everybody. I'm, I'm a bit of a... I, I'm a bit of a chatty person once you get me going. Um, I think I part of, like, growing up, I had that kind of, you know, just in, like, the world itself. Like, I always thought, like, oh, I'm too much. I talk too much. I'm annoying people. But, man, my favorite thing ever is when my uh, friends are, like, info dumping about something that they really like and care about. Because um, they just look so happy. And we work on that. We, we all kind of, like, talk over each other a little bit. Um, and, but we, I don't think it ever feels like, um, a lot of times with neurotypical people, they kind of take it like, oh, you're trying to be the center of attention. Um, when that's really not the case, when that we did, that's our way of relating is well, not, I, I can't speak for everybody, but, um, it's just, you know, sharing our experiences. And unfortunately that can really come across like, um, where, uh, being self-centered or um, narcissistic a little bit. Um, so I think, you know, I, with any kind of, with any communication w between two people or multiple people, you know, you, you, you listen to the other person and, you know, it, it, and not it, try not to get like defensive, I guess. I don't know if that's the way to put it. Um, but you should be able to feel safe to to be able to like even tell the person like hey i i was a little upset that you did a b or c you know i'm not like the perfect uh communicator by by any means but i know i've upset a lot of people or it seemed like i've talked about myself too much or uh and a lot of times it's because um i haven't seen somebody in a long time so i like i have so much i gotta talk about <laughs> uh, but i try not to ever get upset and just be like hey um i think that's where it's important to have hey i kind of want someone to listen right now versus like talk my ear off kind of thing i don't want advice i just want someone to listen and you know i think that's where that you know two-way communication comes from you know not everyone's a mind reader sometimes people just get excited um and i think you know it takes two to tango you know <laughs> Let's see, the Josue. Hey, welcome to the chat. Thank you for joining me in my little corner of the galaxy. Uh, my name is Jiffy. Um, I am a late diagnosed autistic. Uh, I've used my art to find myself, and uh, we talked about the solar eclipse a little bit earlier today. But currently, I'm working on an old alien OC um, for Autism Accept Acceptance Month. So uh, let me put her, the rest of her, together here. <laughs> One second. Oop, there we go. Uh, this is my original uh, alien OC long before I knew uh, I was autistic. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to work on her and kind of just talk about um, my experiences of being on the spectrum and hope that it helps other people. How are you doing this evening? Yeah, I think I like the placement higher on her head. Alright, so let's merge these down. Merge down. There we go. <laughs> the thing I'm trying to get better at is I'm just so... I feel like I'm just so slow at <laughs> drawing, but I'm getting there. Being able to use, like, the cut and paste tool has really helped a lot. Like, her feet, if we, like, turn this off and... Uh, whoopsies. Turn that off. Turn that off. And we turn this one back up. There's, like... I, I had the right idea, but I can already see a huge difference in what I'm doing here. Let's turn this back down. Turn this back on. Yeah, that's all. It's going to look so cute. Um, and I've got to figure out how I want to do the background, but I'm, I'm happy with where this is going so far. <laughs> oh, well, what I do appreciate is my, my channel is somewhere that I can like info dump or like just chat about stuff. Um, I have to remind myself I shouldn't feel bad about, you know, it's my channel. I can talk about whatever I want to talk about. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that, that's kind of been my experience uh, being on the spectrum as far as socializing is, you know, on one hand, I should be able to like, I should 
be excited and be able to talk about the things I love and whatnot, but I do need to be a little more aware if, um, if someone really wants me to listen versus like give them advice or relate to them, so to speak. But, you know, again, takes two to tango on that and they should communicate with me as well. I'm not a mind reader. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So I think I could probably, I got a good, a good sketch going. I could probably start on doing some line work here. Mm -hmm. How do I want to do this? I might do the line work in separate layers. Uh, Stacia, gotta go. Hugs and have a great evening, Jiffy. Absolutely. Thank you for, uh, thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm hoping... Let's see, the Artist Jam is on the 20th. I am hoping to be there. Granted, nothing happens. Uh, and next Monday, I will not be streaming on the 15th. Uh, but yeah, hopefully I'll see you on the 20th. Have a good rest of your day. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I actually want to use... Do, do, do. Use this. All right, so where do I want to start? Do... Probably start on her body. Do this. Now let's rename this. Let's see. Line art. Oh, let's see. Body line art. There we go. There we go. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Alright. Alright. Let's see here. Yeah, I really like um, her. Her eyes are more proportioned. And it looks more like she's looking at you. Uh, something I always struggled with, which I have a list of things uh, when it comes to drawing, is I really want my characters or whatnot to engage more with um, like whoever's looking at them. I really wanted to make sure she was looking at uh, you, turning around like, "Oh, you, you caught me in here in this forest." <laughs> Okay, so now we can probably turn that layer off and we're going to turn this layer down a little bit. There we go. So, uh, question for you guys. So usually when I make prints, oopsies. I like to um, make sure they're kind of like poster size, but if you had to pick, like, would you want something more poster size or something smaller, uh, like to hang in your home? Because um, I will, uh, again, once I get more of these projects done, I will be sending them off to get um, some prints made, but I'm just kind of curious on the sizes or like what you guys would prefer. Do There's a couple of my pictures that I really want to uh, get, like, a holographic <laughs> kind of thing done. But it's going to be a lot of trial and error until I figure out what works. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make the eyes a separate layer. Uh, depends on placement. Hmm, okay. Well, I think with, um, I'm trying, I like to make, um, my pieces really big and large, um, but, um, I, I, I'm just gonna have to experiment, I suppose. Because, <laughs> because of the colors and, uh, that I like to use, I like to make sure it's, like, something that's, you can, like, see across the room. gonna come with practice and uh, experience I suppose originally the uh, the Galarian Rapidash that I was working on um, she was on a, I drew her on an 8 by 10 so like I like wanted to keep that one a little bit smaller Uh, let's see here. Uh, David, like I have some posters 
Some posters, some smaller, and some way bigger hanging in my house. I gotcha. Hmm. I guess I'm just gonna have to play around and find out. Also, I kind of had the idea of uh, a lot of people. A lot of people have been commenting that they really enjoy uh, my voice, so I was kind of curious if you guys would ever like a short story read or some kind of video uh, to help like you relax. Um, it could be like a pre-recorded video; it doesn't necessarily have to be a live stream that you can uh, kind of listen to to help you relax a little bit. Uh, David, I would be down for that. I enjoy podcasts and audiobooks, Reddit stories, and the like. Yeah, I would have to find something uh, that you guys would enjoy. Um, I, I I do have fun reading um, and whatnot, and I, I love listening to podcasts and stuff like that to help me relax. Um, hopefully, some, some of these live streams are just relaxing in general, but I thought it'd be fun to kind of dedicate something more towards, like, act, like real relaxation. Um... And I can maybe adjust my microphone settings a little bit. Um, but I I love the idea of, like, sound is really important to me uh, because I grew up with basically not being able to hear for the longest time. So um, certain sounds are very, very, like, like oh, they're, they're, like, super nice and uh, they make me happy. And I like to kind of give that same kind of feeling or experience for, uh, for what I do. Oop. Oops. Mm -hmm. uh fanfic um i could do fanfic reading but um i would have to i can only um i can only read uh like that or anything that's like youtube appropriate um i know <laughs> there's some channels that they've gone to the patreon route like if you want if you want the the smut and stuff you gotta pay for it on patreon i yeah i cannot read those on um on stream um something that's maybe accessible um to people to everyone i should say <laughs> um, goat oh i like that sorry jose i just noticed you put the goat there we go thank you i appreciate that i'm I know some Gen Z slang uh, as a millennial. I get most of them, and um, I'm proud when I figure it out. But there's some I'm just like, what? What does that mean? I don't understand. <laughs> um, here. Uh, I guess while I'm drawing one of my old OCs what are some of your guys's like do you remember your first like baby's first OC uh when you were like a tween or like barely a teenager because that's that's where Kiku came from and I didn't create another character again until my early 20s it's like each stage of my life I made a character that represented me at the time so 
course, you have, you know, the dragon lady, little edgy, um, the edgy one, and then way later, something that's more deep, right? My, uh, my alien OC here. And the, you know, Jiffy came about, like, gosh, I think I drew her, like, three years ago now. Yeah, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the ones for my teens, ones for my 20s, and the other ones, like, my 30s and the grown-up me. <laughs> Funny how that works. Art is really just cool and uh, how you subconsciously can express yourself. Oops. Please tell me your cringy Mary Sue's. Give me all the OCs. Oh, wow, it's only 7 o'clock. I feel like it's been way longer than that. <laughs> Let's see if I can like that. Hmm, let's actually erase a little bit here. tempted to do one of those uh like oh uh, what are the, like draw emote kind of things um i'm just not sure if i'm confident in my ability yet uh but that might be just something fun to try uh to like uh work those artistic muscles so that is definitely something i've been contemplating Not quite. better with my arm movement when I was in uh, college and I took a painting class and my my teacher really tried to like emphasize like using your whole arm and not just your uh, your wrist to draw oopsies whoa nope <laughs> definitely not that how do I feel about that hmm her her antenna are very like ribbon ribbon like not terrible maybe i'll go with that uh let's see here uh david uh there were several ocs i had growing up i told you about dragon but i remember having this op mary sue naruto ninja <laughs> he got more op the more i played with him i also had an interesting one a mute ninja named uh zen fargo if you know anything about the ninja world they yell out their attacks my thought was what if he was mute how would that work Okay, there you go. Yeah, it's always fun to like take a take a common like trope or like a base and like mess with the formula. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Um, Ekna here is kind of similar in that regard. Uh, 
where she kind of kind of plays along with you know uh similar to like the avatar the, the blue people uh that blockbuster film um and but like yeah she just didn't have a mouth um i just thought it'd be interesting that you know, like how would something like that communicate uh but of course easy answer tele telepathic stuff <laughs> <laughs> Not too hard there, <laughs> but uh, what I didn't realize is even though it's kind of like an ang like a very like angsty quirk, it was really me just like verbal like putting into like a diagram that like I feel like I can't speak or communicate with anybody, no matter how hard I try. And her face is pretty expressionless too, and I'm trying to work on ways to like um, incorporate more of that for her. Um, but that's another thing, you know, I always get told, hey, you're not, you don't smile enough, or, uh, I have a very flat look sometimes, but when you get me going on something, you know, special interest, my whole face, like, lights up. <laughs> so, that, I always dislike the rhetoric that people on the spectrum don't have, like, emotion. It drives me nuts, because I have way too many of them. Do you want some of them? Because I don't want them. <laughs> They're too much. <laughs> well, let's see here. There we go. How's that look? I kind of like that. That's not bad. Uh, let's see. Okay, got caught up on chat there. Okay, so now let's take this. Yeah, and this saves me so much time uh, just being able to do this. So I don't have to draw it twice. Okay. And we're gonna copy paste that. Okay. There we go. Put up a little bit and that. There we go. Actually had something really uh, fun and interesting happen uh, earlier I think it was like a week or so ago so I like to collect dolls and whatnot and one one evening uh, Facebook's like was advertising some comic it was called uh, one of uh, Guinevere and the gem gem writers and it was very modern like it looked new and like man why does why does this look so familiar so I, I typed it in uh, to Google Lo and behold, pops up a figurine from an uh from a show from the same show brand from like 1995, and I f I found out that it was actually uh, I used to own the doll uh, from this line, and it was when I was like six seven years old. I don't know when I got this doll, but all I know is as soon as I saw it, I'm like, oh my gosh! I like took that thing everywhere. I think I might have found it on the ground at a park. Uh, and it wasn't like the complete like figure or doll or anything and <laughs> so um long story short i now own i now own it <laughs> i'll have to post a picture of her um she's missing like i think two things from her original packaging but i guess they revamped the series there was like two seasons from 1995 to 96 and uh, I just felt like a part of my childhood was like, whoops, sorry. Um, a part of my childhood was unlocked. And I'm like, I have to have this because I just remember every little detail about this doll. And it like came rushing back to me. <laughs> um, I think it was like the American, it was probably like an Americanized version of like a magical girl. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just so funny um, how little things like that just like trigger a memory in me. And one of the reasons I like dolls is, like, they're, you can really tell, like, what, um, what era they're from. They're so distinct on, like, their style and what they're representing and whatnot. Um, 
as soon as I saw, uh, as soon as I saw, I'm like, oh my, I, I can imagine holding this in my hand. I had this doll, even if I didn't know like what she was from or what, <laughs> like, I just remember just liking it. And um, that's, that's that fun, um, what was it? Might just, I get fixated on some things. <laughs> I think holding on to your childhood, like parts of it like that is really important, you know? So now, um, now I know that they did a continuation of the series. I don't even, I never even watched the original first few series, so now I'm gonna watch it and then also read the comics that they came out with. They like continued after the original two first seasons, I believe. Yeah, just a little fun thing. Thought it was. I spent like uh, thirty bucks with shipping on it. <laughs> the, a new one in box is like almost two hundred dollars, I think. Let's see, uh, David. There are a couple of dolls I really want to get, specifically the American Girl dolls. The one I want the most is the McKenna doll. Okay, I will have to keep an eye out for that. American Girl is definitely a popular, like, um, obviously, like American brand doll. Um, I like fell in love with like fashion dolls or anything that was like uh, strange and unusual as Lydia from Beetlejuice would say uh, like the um, Betty Spaghetti dolls I don't know if you guys ever heard of those I really like those there we go eh, that's all. okay that works um, something that had kind of like a gimmick or whatnot to it <laughs> I think they're like we have um the new Ghostbusters movie just came out and we have like a local like Ghostbusters group that like they go up they do like appearances at the movies or like cons I, I think it's fun to like keep those things in your life those things are like cult were culturally sorry culturally significant at the time mm-hmm yeah oh the oh you remember the uh the Betty Spaghetti's I loved those talk about like mixing and matching stuff um, I think it's important to keep those things. That's why I'm drawing Ekna today. Like, this was a, a very kind of thing. It, it, a lot of my 20s wasn't great as far as like self acceptance and like many other things. Uh, but I found so much solace in the, the times I did draw and work on characters like this. And I don't want to take that for granted anymore. There we go. How's that? Oh, that's close enough. Okay. Continuing on. Let's see here. Uh, Josh Sullivan. Hey, welcome to the chat. How are you? Thanks for joining me in a little, uh, my little corner of the galaxy. How are you doing? Let's see. Uh, yeah, the Cabbage Patch dolls. I have a, I have a, uh, <laughs> I have a story about the Cabbage Patch dolls. Uh, thanks, Josh, for uh, joining the stream. How are you doing this evening? <laughs> I'm uh, continuing on uh, working on an old OC, um, kind of tying into Autism Acceptance Month. Um, but yeah, how are you doing? Um, where was I going to go with uh, what was? Oh yeah, the Cabbage Patch dolls. So, you know, young little Jiffy here uh, got in trouble when she was little uh, one Christmas and like right before Christmas, and I got into my my parents things and I I tore open I was like ooh a Toys R Us bag <laughs> uh, and it was a Cabbage Patch doll and I got in so much trouble <laughs> oh man it's like wait what? I like I knew what I was doing right but it's just like I was only like maybe five or so and it's like ooh a toy bag for me <laughs> Let's see here. Inserted image. Okay, let me actually, let's do this. Merge down. Merge down. Oh, nope, not reference, please. Merge down. There we go. Paste this. There we go. Oh, man. Yeah, I think, um, 
I remember distinctly that the the cabbage patch I think that was like one of those it wasn't quite like Black Friday shopping but it was one of those toys that like made parents go insane <laughs> Uh, what are you excited about for tomorrow, Joshua? What's going on? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, the, my Cabbage Patch doll, I, like, remember it had, like, a distinct, like, s like, n it was a really nice smell or something. Uh, but they're really, like, they're okay, but they, they're not really worth the hype. I never liked, um, that they always had so many dolls out there, like, oh, you're a girl, so let's give you a baby doll because you're going to be a mom someday. And it's like, eh. <laughs> I preferred fashion dolls, mostly. <laughs> All right. Come on. Uh, yeah, quick reminder, I will be taking a break next Monday, the 15th. Um, to celebrate my anniversary with my husband to anyone just joining the stream. Oh, let's see here. David, um, that reminds me of a story of when I was little. There was a tornado going on and I had to go to the basement. In the basement, Dad had some unopened Power Ranger toys. Let's just say there they are no more. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you opened... Oh, no. <laughs> Like, as a child, it's like, yes, we must open everything. Like, the dolls I collect now, there might be some that I keep in the box, but, like, why, why, why do I do that to myself? I bought it because I want to, like, play with it and have fun, you know? Uh, let's see, Joshua, I get to continue my internship tomorrow. Um, if I remember correctly, did you say you were going into gunsmithing? Is that correct? Yeah, I don't know what these markings on her. I'm, again, very... Not the most creative. I was trying to make her kind of, like, tribal-looking here. <laughs> Let's see. Come in here. Um, did... Let's see, Josh, did you get to experience the solar eclipse today? Um, if you, if you weren't here for the first part of the stream, I did, like, like, 20... 20 some facts about the solar eclipse <laughs> let's see here uh correct oh awesome well congrats i hope that's been going well for you i know my uh, i think i mentioned earlier my brother-in-law is doing welding it's pretty cool the only thing i ever like felt like i kind of akin to was doing art stuff so here we go oops there we go yeah that looks good Nope, wait, nope, not quite. How about like that? How does that look? That's... Mm. Tilt it that way. little bit. Eh, I think I will just try to draw it again. <laughs> right. Yeah, we were also uh, talking about if anybody has a fun Mary Sue OC that they would like to talk about, please let me know. Uh, I'll have to definitely... I don't I don't think I have any images of her on the computer right now, but I'll have to bring up Kiku sometime. I was very edgy. Her name was uh, Kiku Kamazaro. Wow. Um, I was very into Dragon Ball Z at the time, so she has, like, her backstory is very much a Goku backstory. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, Joshua, I'm not really into solar eclipses, but I do find it fascinating that we as humans have an almost biological reaction to them. Yeah, it's, um, I didn't even realize there was a solar eclipse until, um, like over a week ago, and I did kind of feel a little off today. Um, my friend usually tells me it's the, it's the, it's the retrograde going on. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, um, I had no idea it was happening until like very recently. And I just, uh, thankfully already had, uh, the glasses from the 2017 solar, solar eclipse. <laughs> but like scientifically, I can see why that's like really like fascinating to people. We only have so much like frame of reference for like space and whatnot. Like our, uh, our technology has gotten to Mars, but like it's just you know a, a little little rover kind of thing. Like we haven't gone too far outside of like the moon and whatnot. I think science is just fun. And it's uh it's really awesome uh, that we have people that have a special interest in it because it is a lot of like really like wordy uh like information that I can't quite always grasp if that makes sense. But they just people love it so much that like if it wasn't for you know people having a special interest in that like where would we be, you know? I think humans are pretty unique in that way. Oh, let's see, I think I want to move this. Copy paste. There we go. Paste that. Paste. Oops. Nope, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. Come on. There we go. Oh, nope. That's not what I wanted. Nope, nope, nope. Let's do... There we go. That's what I wanted. Copy, paste, please. Hmm. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we just, uh, I think the totality of where I'm at hit between, like, 12.35 and, like, 1.55, so I went out a few times to look at it. It is really cool. Um, I guess, like, when it comes to space, though, I think it's just such a grand thing that it is hard for your, your like, for some people to, like, grasp just how serious or how, like, cool it might be <laughs> to someone. Do do. But just like, uh, I think I was talking about like communicating earlier um, as someone on the spectrum and like sharing your special interest. Like, man, I am happy about that any day. Just please share with me what you like and what you love. Because um, I just love seeing the joy on people's faces. Um, but when it comes to like, you know, feeling like no one's listening to you or, or um, maybe someone else feels like you're making it about yourself. It's also really important to make sure that, you know, to check in. I think it's just good to check in with people. Like, oh, like, you shouldn't have to apologize if you get excited about something, but like, hey, uh, I just want to make sure, like, I just uh, hope I'm not like, like talking too much or whatnot, um, but I'm just so excited to share this with you. If that makes sense. <laughs> one of my one of my favorite things my husband does, and when he just starts going on about something, and my ADHD like catches maybe some of it, <laughs> but he's just so excited to share. It makes me happy. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, I've been spending a lot of time on these antenna. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like that. I'm probably gonna make the eyes a separate layer. Turn this one down too. There we go. <laughs> and for any uh, for anyone just joining the chat, if you would take a moment to uh, like, subscribe, or even share my video with someone that you feel might need a little stop on their journey uh, to hang out in my little corner of the galaxy, yes, send them my way. Oh, let's see here. David, I've never made it outside for this eclipse, the 2017 eclipse I was watching with my roommates at the time. Instead, I was cooped up inside recording videos. Unfortunately, I had to uh, stop rendering. <laughs> yep, gotcha, gotcha. on 7 30 i think tonight i will go to probably about eight o'clock and call it um i've got a long week ahead of me um and i will make sure to uh, do a reminder post uh that i will be gone next monday i'm hoping by the end of the month i have it put in my calendar i'm going to try to do uh, a, a community game night with everybody and i'm going to have to set something up to do like a test stream to make sure that works for everybody <laughs> sure if I like how that nose looks, but I will come back to it. <laughs> What's uh, the rest of everyone's week looking like? Is it, I'm hoping the weather is getting nice where everyone's at. I've been so happy that the weather's been getting a little bit warmer. I am not a fan of winter. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Hello, Berry Pumpkin. How are you doing this evening? Welcome to my little corner of the galaxy. We uh, we were chatting a little bit earlier about the solar eclipse. Still kind of are. Um, and at the beginning, I did do a little like, uh, like fun facts about the solar eclipse. And I'm just continuing working on my alien OC from last week to continue uh, for Autism Acceptance Month. I'll be uh, streaming to about 8 o'clock this evening and calling it. Um, and then next week I will be gone uh, to celebrate my anniversary with my husband. You're doing good? Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Did you uh, get to experience the solar eclipse today? See, uh, uh, David, working uh, the rest of the week, have to do some cleaning the next few days, however. Ooh, the dreaded cleaning. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Josh, so one of my OCs is autistic, and he's basically, uh, let's see, one second. He is basically helping his cousin, who is also autistic, navigate the pitfalls of adulthood. Yeah, um, the one thing about adulthood is, like, it, I really wish I was prepared a little bit more, but a lot of it is just experience. Uh, uh, Berry Pumpkin. Nope, I completely missed the eclipse. That is A-OK. -okay. Um, I was telling everyone I didn't even know it was happening until like a week ago. <laughs> and I just got lucky that I had the um, the solar glasses from the 2017 eclipse. <laughs> move, whoopsies, let's move this up a little bit. Copy paste. Move up a little higher on the forehead here. Oopsies. Where am I at? How did I copy that twice? One second. Merge down, please. There we go. <laughs> Dun. I 
I think uh, there definitely needs to be a uh, I think there's been some in recent media, but having more neurodivergent coded characters in media would be really nice. But there's there's definitely quite a few. They're just not explicitly like like it's not explicitly mentioned. Oopsies. Alright, so let's do this. We're gonna do this copy. Copy then paste. Then we're gonna do this, and we're gonna shrink it down. There we go. Bring it down a little more. I was trying to kind of like make it, um, these little diamonds on her head are supposed to kind of give her a, like an eyebrow or something. Okay, making sure I'm caught up on chat. Uh, let's see here. We're gonna paste it again. Come on. There we go. I need to lift it a little higher. Yeah. Come on. And we're going to paste it again. Drink it down. Yeah. Let's do that. There we go. Oh yeah, we were also talking about um, Barry Pumpkin. Did you have a Mary Sue OC or any kind of OC that you really care about? It could be like current or old. Uh, I just want to hear about them. wanted this pattern to like follow the curvature of the around her eyes <laughs> All right. and maybe I should keep that one further down like right here Okay, I think I got it now. Boop. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> All right. Do, 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 do. while we're on the topic of like OCs and media that maybe are narrow spicy coded I'm trying to think <sighs> I 
though I'm a big MLP fan. I feel like Twilight Sparkle is very, very coded. Um, I relate to her a lot about with, with how my brain works. Um, you guys have a favorite person that's represented in media that feel like you feel like it represents you. see here Joshua I feel as an adult I've come to accept that I have limits with how much I can interact with people and for how long and I I think it's healthy to know like what your boundaries are some something I had to learn after my big burnout was like that was kind of the crux of I need to establish some boundaries with people and I think just in general establishing boundaries for yourself is extremely healthy um, I only have so many, you know, spoons in a day myself. Um, that's why I was a little nervous about doing streaming. You know, I was like, oh man, do I have the mental bandwidth? Am I going to be able to do this? Um, but I think the pros outweighed the cons because the kind of like socializing that I do at my job is a, a lot different than what I'm like doing right here with you guys and just like having a nice conversation um, about things. So. Um, yeah, I think it's really important to establish those things. I don't think it's good to... I don't want to say good. I I personally don't like to limit myself because when I, when I did that, I wouldn't do anything. I was like, oh no, I'm too, you know, I'm too far behind or I'm too, I'm not smart enough or I'm not this or I'm not that. I think it's okay to know what your boundaries are, but it's okay to also kind of push them occasionally. But that's just me. Everyone's a little bit different. Um, but I just know when I was limiting myself, I like I know what I like have hard cutoffs for, right? But I was like really limiting myself. Um, but having you know again a good support system, and I know that's hard, easier said than done. It took me a long time to have a good support system. But I think it's, I think it's healthy to you know if you have the bandwidth for it push yourself a little bit don't limit yourself you know take it in little steps it doesn't have to be this giant leap uh you know a giant leap for mankind <laughs> kind of thing like it's okay to have limits but but don't don't let that be the like barrier from keeping you from trying something that you really love and care about if that makes sense everyone knows like you know yourself best so like i only know from my experience what works and what doesn't work if that makes sense um so like again i'm not i'm not a doctor i can't i will never say you have to do something um you know yourself best so you know like what you're comfortable with but like don't don't let fear rule your life if that makes sense That's uh, the, the reason that you're seeing me stream right now and um, like be here is because, you know, I'm not happy. I was, I'm, I'm not happy with where my life's been going, my career and all these things. The thing that I always really wanted to do was just to be able to create and, um, and whatnot. And, but it's going to take a lot of work and there is a lot of obstacles, but um, some of the obstacles are worth it because I get to do something that makes me feel fulfilled in life. Uh, let's see here. Uh, souls, true, true. And uh, Josh, loud music makes me shut down faster than anything else. And that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, one of the things uh, auditory that I have issues with, and I've mentioned multiple times that I was born with, like both my eardrums were not fully formed, so I was pretty deaf for like the first half of my life and I had surgery to fix those things. Um, but there's a difference for me. For me, the sound that I have trouble with 
is large crowds and a lot of people all talking at once and my brain can't process it. And it just sounds like garble, like garbage to me. And I get a, I get a very bad headache. But on the flip side of it, as far as music goes, if, if it's a well-balanced, like I, I get to help out with my local convention's um, AV team and they are amazing at what they do for visually and auditorially and be, it's they're all neurospicy all of them <laughs> but they they know how to balance sound that's pleasing to the ears and like if i when i'm at the rave or whatnot and i have such a great time like eventually i do get a little overstimulated that's when you if you go to a loud concert of any kind you should have some sort of ear protection anyways because it's not good for your ears <laughs> um but they um uh, but that kind of sound where I can kind of feel it all in my body and it's well balanced and it's like it's perfectly constructed to be a pleasant experience. I love that. But with the rest of the convention, for example, um, there's like thousands of people, right? And they're all talking. It's, it sounds like just a bunch of garbled mess. And I just like, I hate it. <laughs> so I also wear earplugs. Oh, you're very welcome, David. Absolutely. Um, in uh, it's again, it's about establishing like what are your boundaries? What are you willing to? What is okay and not okay for you? And 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 not letting people walk all over those boundaries. And that's just a healthy thing for anybody. Um, is like you have people in your life that understand what your boundaries are and view them correct. And there's going to be some instances where you guys clash. That's normal. But like, we got to work together, you know, whether you're neurospicy or neurotypical or whatnot. Like, it's just about respecting each other. Mm -hmm. But I'm going on a tangent. I apologize. <laughs> And the hard part is if like, you know, like myself, if you are like only recently diagnosed, you're kind of like figuring out what those boundaries are. Like you went, you went a long time and you're like, oh, I have to, this is what's normal. I have to be this way, blah, blah, blah. Um, but on the flip side of it, and you know, I have, I have a lot of friends from different like perspectives when it comes to neurodivergence. I have a friend who grew up knowing, like they told him young age, oh, you you are on the spectrum, all that stuff. But they they overhelped in a way that wasn't helpful. And I think I probably brought that up before. And like like, oh you just have to try harder. You have to, you know, you can do it. You're just not trying hard enough. And that's that's very dismissive as well. And so like you're kind of again forced to be at a standard that that doesn't work for you so when you feel like the world's not working with you it's you kind of it's kind of hard to feel like you want to work with it you know so, there's a there's a different experience for everybody <laughs> when it comes to whether you're late diagnosed or you were diagnosed when you were young. For me, if I would have known, I, I don't, well, as I mentioned last stream, my, my mom has mentioned to me, like, nobody ever helped. Like, it, nobody gave her advice on what to do. Uh, they just, it was just always so negative, you know? And it was like really dumb stuff. Like my brother, oh, he's tapping his pencil too much. Okay, so is it really that much of a deal that he's stimming with his pencil? I do that with clicking pens. <laughs> uh, let's see, Joshua, I, uh, like I love my mom. We have a very close relationship, but when she sings, I have to leave the room. I gotcha. That's okay. And it's, you know, I think maybe to phrase it like, you know, it's not, you're just, you got I, my, my friend that I was just talking about very hypersensitive with the hearing. Uh, and uh so much so like even i had to like really say like oh okay like 
because I have hearing issues too, but mine are just a little bit different. I, I just think um, when it comes to family, it can get a little touchy, especially with your parents because, you know, like, oh, I raised you, I did all these things. Um, but you should be able to voice your concerns, you know? Um, it, it's okay that you, you're sensitive to sound. Be like, um, so, you know, my suggestion, if, if you know you're going to be around your mom, and if maybe she starts singing, maybe, you know, there's uh, there's all different kinds of earplugs. Like, maybe just put some loop earplugs in or maybe some headphones and, like, you know, let her know, like, this kind of helps me on the day-to-day. -day. And you don't have to make it about her singing. Just be like, I'm, I feel my ears feel, like, really sensitive right now. I'm just going to pop these in if, like, if she has to know, <laughs> you know, um... Cause, uh, I know sometimes when I'm over at my f uh, my my uh, my husband's family, uh, I love them all to death. But my my husband's kind of guilty of it too. They can get very loud. <laughs> and again, as I've said, like when there's that many people talking all at once, I just get such a massive headache. <laughs> um, so like I feel like I have to plug my ears, and, um, and it's okay. It's just. Um, yeah, just because you have sensitive ears doesn't mean you love your mom any less when she's singing. That's just something that she likes to do, and that that's okay. But there's there's like options, you know. And I think people should just be open to like, you know, those options. Like everyone is very different and has specific needs and wants, you know. Um, I don't know if I'm making any sense, but <laughs> we just gotta we all have to work together, you know. I can't wait to start putting color on this picture. <laughs> That's why, you know, with my stream, sound is extremely important for my streams because I really want, you know, if I'm gaming, I'm, I'm going to warn you guys now, I can get pretty <laughs> vocal when I'm gaming, but uh, for stuff like my art streams, I, I do want it to be relaxing. I want it to sound good because, you know, I know there's like a thing for people, whether it's podcasts or, um, YouTubers or Twitch streams that they just I, I love hearing the sound of people talking and having a good time it, you know but if, when it starts to get to the um, like big crowd like multiple people trying to talk it's a little rough but I want my art stream videos to be something you can throw on in the background and relax to I, I specifically took some time um, I don't know what they all mean but I took some time figuring out uh, the best uh, oh, what is it? Uh, filters or uh, compressors or just like the stuff to do to my microphone on OBS so that way it sounds really um, intimate and a nice well-rounded sound. Um, so far I've been listening back to my videos and even I was you know like oh this is nice. I like the vibe. Um, I actually have my microphone pretty close to my mouth. <laughs> But I made it so that way you don't get any sound coming from the left or the right side. It's like directly in front. So hopefully you're not picking up any like um, noises. Like you can probably hear me typing on the keyboard, but it was really important to me that you kind of just are able to only hear my voice and it's really warm and rounded and calm. <laughs> uh, I'm rambling. I do that a lot. <laughs> about 10 minutes left and I'm definitely gonna yeah definitely gonna call it at 8 today um, and I will make sure to post a reminder about next week um, and I will be working diligently trying to get the community game night going hopefully by the end of the month and if that uh, pops off really well and you guys have fun with that I will try to do that uh, if not every Friday night like every other Friday I can be a pretty loud singer myself uh when it comes i love 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 singing but sometimes you just you just kind of have to belt it <laughs> oh. 
My, one of my special interests, I know we were talking about them a little bit earlier, is communication. I, uh, because I struggle, you know, connecting with people, I really like hyper-focused on communicating with people. And th that can also lead to, like, being, like, a people pleaser. Um, it, so I can, I can unintentionally actually do more harm than good <laughs> and ignore my boundaries. Um, but I really, I really like to, like, everyone communicates so differently, and I can't please everybody, but I sure do try sometimes. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Joshua. Because I was misdiagnosed with ADHD, my mom researched how to navigate that, but now I am properly diagnosed, she has been able to navigate it properly. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, um, a lot of the, uh, uh like, millennials, uh, and probably Gen, Gen X and whatnot, um, they they only wanted to diagnose the ADHD because having the tism again, ooh, taboo. Like my brother was only diagnosed with ADHD and he is definitely on the spectrum. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Jester Cat, hey, welcome to the stream. Um, I'm streaming till about eight o'clock. Uh, so a few more minutes here, but I appreciate you coming and joining me in my little corner of the galaxy. Uh, let's see, I love your art style. It reminds me a bit of candy. Awesome. I appreciate that. I've really been, um, Gosh, the last like year I've been really trying to like I think digital art has really helped me hone on like what my style is I was kind of getting it with my traditional art um, but doing doing this digital uh, refresh series has really helped me like ah uh, yes I love bubbly bright bold lines bright color um, I like that style is candy I love it thank you so much um, and if uh, if you have time uh, if you if you guys wouldn't mind again liking subscribing and sharing this video if you feel like someone else would like to hang out in my little corner of the galaxy i would appreciate it let's see here i like that candy my style is candy love it love it love it thank you <laughs> Here. Yeah, we're uh, continuing on drawing uh, for Autism Acceptance Month, working on my original Alien OC, and um, if you'd like, at the beginning of the video, uh, we did do some fun facts about the solar eclipse. Um, did you get to enjoy the solar eclipse today? Is that a big thing for you? I know it kind of varies person to person. Um, I got to capture or, or see most of it because um, I was home today, and my husband worked from home, so that helped. Thank you. <laughs> and uh for those just tuning in hopefully by the end of the month i'm hoping to do a, a community game night thinking some jackbox games yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the mis the misdiagnosis thing definitely happens a lot. Of uh, so for for ladies on the spectrum, a lot of times what happens is um, it's not impossible to have both of these, but they get misdiagnosed with having a uh, like a personality disorder of some kind um, that happened with a friend of mine, and she got or like both of her kids were diagnosed with autism, and so she went and got retested to to find out. Sure, is you know there is that she was autistic herself let's see here jester cat uh where i was it was cloudy all day oh no i think i saw somebody post on reddit they drove like a thousand miles to see the total eclipse and wherever they ended up it was like super cloudy and they were like f flipping off the sky <laughs> i think it was under uh, mildly infuri infuriating <laughs> oh my god let's see here uh joshua I would compare my place on the spectrum um, as a dwarf in the forge. There you go. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty short myself. I'm I'm definitely a dwarf size. <laughs> I've been um. Let's see here. Actually, let me pull it up really quick. Um, I'm definitely gonna give full reins to my VTuber artist because uh, she you know she, she took my original drawing of. 
one second. She took this original drawing, and that's why you see the VTuber in front of you now. Um, I was kind of taking what she's already done and kind of tinkering around on my own to create the rest of my look, uh, but I definitely want to give her full reign. <laughs> like, artistic reign of, you know, whatever she thinks would be good. But this is kind of where I've gotten with it. Um, really big goal of mine to have this updated, hopefully by the end of the year. Oh, let's see here. Oh, really quick before I sign off for the day. Uh, Sabi, Mr. Husband, don't look at this part of the video because I'm going to show them my present that I'm working on you for our anniversary. Oh. He's got his earplugs in. <laughs> I'm going to show them the thing I'm working on for this part of the video. You cannot look. <laughs> okay. Um, here's what I'm working on for our uh, three year anniversary. You can kind of get a gander of what it is I'm doing. This one's going to be all done in traditional, um, but I've been having a lot of fun reworking uh, this. So, yep. Put this away before he peeks. <laughs> Where is it at? Where was I? Here we go. <laughs> yeah um as far as uh sorry I, i'm always all over the place so being late diagnosed and being on the spectrum the alien motif is definitely strong another thing that i wanted to really incorporate was down in my logo here um to put the in the golden infinity system uh, sorry eh, infinity symbol in the in my logo so i've really wanted to fully embrace this part of myself and i don't ever it was the um the part that i felt like i was ashamed of uh let's see here uh let's see Do -do. joshua already read that one uh not height wise but just the crazy detail obsession yeah absolutely I get really, um, that's what sometimes takes me a while with these drawings. I get a little too hooked on uh, a little detail part and I'm like, nope, I'm focusing too much on this. <laughs> um, let's see, David, ooh, can you send me that off stream? I pinky pie swear not to show up. Yeah, I'll send you the, that's, that's just like the rough draft I've been working on. Um, I've been having a lot of fun working on it. Do do, uh, Right, so yeah, so my um, my watermark here, I wanted to incorporate the infinity symbol and uh, for autism um, and just like fully embrace this part of myself. So I hope if anything, um, whether, you know, it's, it's really impart important for me to express self-love and how much, how important it is to be kind to yourself and to love yourself. And that's where my character has come from both of both of these alien characters i love both of them very much and that's giving myself love <laughs> uh let's see here david cross my heart hope to fly stick a cupcake in my eye okay pinkie pie let's <laughs> see 759 okay yeah probably gonna have to call it here um uh, right let's finish this little piece here um Again, I really hope uh, these streams have been like fun, kind of informative. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a very slow drawer. <laughs> uh, it's 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 definitely tricky uh, drawing and uh, and talking at the same time. <laughs> uh, but I really I always hope you guys just like have fun and it's informative um, or at least relaxing, because I I tend to ramble on and sometimes I've been told. It, people like me rambling and i appreciate that a lot <laughs> uh let's see here josh uh hand drawing individual pores is one of my hyper fixations so do you do you do real quick before i end the stream do you do um gosh stifling have you heard of stifling it's kind of like um one second give me one second where is it at uh like this tattoo I've been working on, this right here, like tons of little, little dots to create the shading and the texture. <laughs> it's definitely a fun, uh, it's, it's a really cool uh, 
technique that looks very like uh what would i call it like like something you would see in like an old book like a fairy tale book or just something that's really old <laughs> <laughs> oh man i promise some of these drawings will get done um let me see where am i at with this one is coming along nicely i love this one to death i can't wait for this one to be done uh let's see here that and followed by light erasing oh okay yet something that i was taught in college um that i didn't understand until more recently is like your your negative space so like hat let's say you have a whole piece of paper that's like got it's black with charcoal and then you draw the picture by creating negative space with your eraser like my little brain at the time could not figure that out but now i'm like it's it's always good to think uh, of your drawings with shapes. Always start with shapes, and then you can go from there. <laughs> oh man, but uh, yeah, I had a wonderful evening with you guys. It's always a pleasure. Um, thank you guys so much for the views last week, um, and just thank you for your support. Uh, this little blue alien has been so like I don't feel so alien, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah. You guys have a wonderful rest of your week, um, and I will see you, um, I think, it, let me double check the calendar, one second, one moment, where's the calendar? Do, do, do. Do, do. I want to make sure I tell you guys the right date. Uh, yeah, so hopefully I will be back on the 22nd of April. Um, I'm gonna hang out with my hubby next week and just take a break and uh, get stuff ready hopefully for a gaming sesh with you guys at the end of the month. Oh, you're very welcome, Josh. I'm I'm really happy to create this space. Um, uh, I'm gonna keep rambling because that's what I do, but you guys have a wonderful evening and a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you soon. Good night!